Hello, my name is Joe Beer and I'm with Beer Meters and I would like to take just a minute of your time and talk about our temporary personal grounds and how Beer has participated in this field within the utility market for the last 30 plus years. Um, as a matter of fact, Beer's first product in utility market is what you see sitting beside me right here. This is our temporary personal grounds tester, the GT400. Uh, which stands for Grounds Tester 400 Amps. When beer manufacturers any temporary personal grounds such as the grounds you see behind me, um, what we do is we actually test the assemblies by using our exclusive ASTM rated continuous current grounds testers such as our GT400 here or our GT600. If the assembly doesn't pass using our tester it will not withstand any advertent high fault current it may experience in the field. Uh, so please continue watching our video on our GT400 uh, as we demonstrate uh, using this unique tool by testing two of the temporary personal grounds you see behind us. So thank you for watching, stay safe, and have a great day. The GT400 is a portable AC 400 amp temporary personal grounds tester which requires a 120 volt 30 amp circuit to power the device. The GT400 is the only temporary personal grounds tester which performs a true AC integrity test in accordance with ASTM F855-17 Table 1 continuous rated current for each ground cable being tested. The unit being demonstrated in this video does have our VMA or voltmeter addition and we will review the features of this option later in the video. The device contains an on off power selector switch, a large 0 to 100 percent rheostat to control the current output, the voltmeter addition negative and positive lead terminals, the voltmeter addition selector switch, the LED voltage drop meter display, and the LED continuous current meter display. Also located inside the GT is the instruction manual and the pass fail table based on ASTM F2249-18. This table contains the cable length in feet and the continuous current based on the size of the cable. Before we test a ground assembly, Beer highly recommends the user thoroughly read understand and apply one of the two methods demonstrated on the instruction illustration as seen here. In this video demonstration we are going to perform the test using the tight parallel configuration. In our first ground assembly test we will use our ball stud adapters even though both clamps used will be our inch and a quarter duckbill clamps. We did this to demonstrate how a single GT clamp adapter can be used for various or multiple clamp styles, not just a single one. Install both adapters into each side of the GT and make sure they thread easily and completely until hand tight. Once both adapters are hand tight, use a supplied tightening pin and insert it into the provided adapter holes and tighten until the adapter is a snug fit. Now that both adapters are secured, we can attach our ground assembly to be tested. If your ground assembly being tested is not a new assembly, you should always perform a preliminary visual inspection before the installation of the ground assembly and look for any abnormalities, cuts, abrasions, or defects that may cause a failure prior to a current test. Pay special attention to the clamps and make sure they are free of any oxidation, dirt, or any other contaminants that may cause a bad electrical connection and clean if necessary prior to making contact with the GT. Once the clamps are in contact with the GT, make sure they are properly tightened and have a secure mechanical connection. 
With the assembly properly connected, configure the cable as previously mentioned and illustrated. As demonstrated here, a tight parallel configuration is achieved using inexpensive plastic clamps as you would see at any hardware store. Now turn the GT power on. With the rheostat in the zero position, the display should read zero plus or minus two counts as seen here. If the GT displays more than two counts, Bureau recommends the GT get calibrated before proceeding to test ground assemblies. Gradually turn the rheostat off of the zero position and take notice to the current and volt drop displays. Since we know the cable size is number two, we want to make sure we do not exceed the proper continuous current rating and unnecessarily overheat the cable, causing it an erroneous volt drop display. Once we settle in right at 165 amps, we can then take note of the volt drop display. Compare the volt drop display to the predetermined volt drop based on the size and length of cable. Since we know the cable size is number two and the length is eight feet, quickly review the chart. 0.29 volts is the acceptable threshold level and our test specimen is 0.24 volts. This ground assembly has passed the continuant current test. Be sure to only run the test as long as necessary and not inadvertently run for long periods of time because the ground assembly temperature will begin to climb above ambient temperatures, which may cause a higher than normal volt drop reading. If this occurs, simply allow time for the assembly to cool and perform the test again. Using the voltmeter addition, we can troubleshoot the volt drop reading within the ground assembly. Simply plug the leads in and toggle the voltmeter switch from internal to external. Once this is done, the meter leads will take external voltage readings and display them as the volt drop. As an example in this demonstration, if we suspected a bad connection between the duckbill clamp and the ferrule, we can touch them to determine what the volt drop is and compare the reading to the acceptable level on the provided chart under the C and F value located at the bottom. The acceptable volt drop for a clamp and ferrule used with number two conductor is 0 0.028 volts and the actual clamp and ferrule volt drop reading taken here is 0 0.012 volts. This clamp and ferrule connection is considered good. In our next demonstration, we will test one of our manufactured six foot two odd elbow ground assemblies with our three quarter C clamp on one end. To perform this test correctly, an elbow ground accessory must be attached to the GT as seen here. Just like the previous duck bill test, perform a thorough visual inspection looking for any defects and also pay close attention to both ends of the assembly to verify a good electrical connection with no oxidation, dirt, or contaminants. Be sure to attach both ends with a secure mechanical connection. Again, just as in the duckbill grounding assembly example, we want to apply the plastic clamps to hold the cable in a tight parallel configuration. Once the ground assembly is secure, turn the GT power on and make sure the unit is on zero plus or minus two counts. Using the current control rheostat, Slowly increase the current output and pay close attention to the current meter display and not accidentally apply too much current to overheat the cable. Using 2 watt cable, 300 amps is our maximum continuous current and with an assembly 6 feet long, our expected volt drop reading threshold should be no more than 0 .30 volts. By using the chart to verify this reading, we can quickly determine this elbow ground assembly is good and ready for use.
We hope the demonstrations in this video were able to assist you in properly utilizing the unique capabilities of our GT400. This tool has been exclusively engineered and designed by Beer to dramatically enhance a temporary personal ground test and therefore assist any utility, contractor, or safety laboratory in providing a qualified, safe ground assembly. If you have any questions or concerns about our GT400, please call us at 803-786-4839 or email us at customer service at Stay safe and have a great day.